Gomboro is best given at latest two weeks. Given the face Gomboro after three weeks, a waste of time and could cause them the disease if their immunity is low. Given the face Gomboro early enough is the best way and just in case it fails, then the second dose can now serve as the first dose, which must still be given within the first two weeks of life. Latest three weeks of their life. Chicks and other birds have what is called busa, where Gomboro derived its scientific name, infectious busa disease, IBD. The busa is responsible for producing antibodies that fight infections. This busa is most active within the first two weeks of their lives or the lives of the poultry birds to produce those antibodies. Your vaccine is a living virus, which is why the Gombro vaccine is called Infectious Brussel Disease Virus, IBDV, and always written on the bottle or the pack. When you give your best this vaccine, the booster produces antibodies called B cells, also named after booster since it was first identified in birds. The same B cell is now the common name for similar antibodies, even in other animals. These B cells quickly notice the viruses and fight them off. The cells, by that action, would have assumed the role of defenders of the birds against a similar virus in future to fight them. That is what immunization or vaccination does. It stimulates the self-defense mechanism of the birds. It is also important to know that this busa, which produces these antibodies who are like soldiers or military men or defenders in big and small birds, it gradually reduces the size as the birds grow older, which affects the alertness of the antibodies with age. Therefore, when Gombro vaccine is not given within the first two weeks of life, when this defense mechanism can be activated, it is likely not going to be effective. If properly given within the first two weeks of life, then a repeat dose is only necessary as a reminder or activator or military drill for the B-cell not to forget that there is an enemy called Gomboro that must always be attacked anytime it enters the chicken's body. However, there are situations where the first dose may be unsuccessful or not given at all or forgotten due to an inspired vaccine or poor handling or poor storage or any other means. If the vaccine is destroyed, you may not know. You may not know. Especially if the vaccine is not stored between 2 degrees to 8 degrees centigrade. That is the poor handling. The vaccine may fail. When this first vaccination fails, it will amount to not even giving them at all. In most cases, the farmer will not know that the vaccination has failed. He or she will delay the next dose till after three weeks, which also makes no meaning at all, as the booster is no longer able to stimulate the right defense against the virus in the vaccine. If the second dose vaccine is also poorly handled, like the first one, it means that the best never took Gomboro at all. In that case, with all exposure to the virus, they will be affected by the disease, which no future can destroy all your poultry beds. The if infected ones that survive it will live with the virus forever, and they become carriers, and they cannot pass this virus through their physics or through their gums. Without proper biosecurity, your new stock can get infected in future. That's why you see many poultry farmers suffer this particular scenario up to today. The first problem they ever contact, the first problem they ever had in that farm is still fighting the new bears up to today and they don't know. They continue blaming the hatchery, they continue blaming the suppliers, they continue blaming feed manufacturers. 
without knowing where the problem lies. Another scenario is that if the first dose fell and you give a second dose at four weeks, if the second dose doesn't fail from expiration, storage, or handling, it will simply amount to infecting the bears with the disease, which is why some people will complain that their bears started dying after Gomboro vaccine. It's also important to add that your day old chicks have some immunity against the disease, which was passed on to them from their parent stock that laid the egg, that hatched them also. But this hen to chick immunity also reduces rapidly within the first two weeks of the age. For me, it reduces between first day to tenth day. When this hen to chick immunity is still very high or active, the chick can fight the infection by themselves, which is why the disease doesn't affect the very young chicks. This immunity acquired from the mother, however, doesn't last forever, and a vaccine must be given when the B cells in the young chick's body have reduced reasonably. If you give vaccines at day old or two days within the mother acquired immune is still high, the vaccine will not have any effect in stimulating a future defense mechanism in the chick. Probably, the chicks may even die because of the high intensity of the vaccines, both from the mother acquired immune system and the additional one you have given that may even kill the birds. The big question will now be how can you say you must have given vaccine early and at the same time don't give vaccine early because of the mother acquired immune or immunity or immune system. Another question is will be that when it is when is the best time to administer the first gumboro vaccine to chicks? Here is your answer. When your chicks are hatched, a few of them in that badge are taken to the laboratory and killed. Samples of the booster are taken to determine the quantity of B cells or soldiers per gram size of the chick. Once that value or theta is determined, the hatchery can easily project when that value will drop to the extent of the chicks needing a new or external vaccine. This is done for both Lasota and Gomburo and some other vaccines. Then with this result, a vaccination schedule is produced by that particular hatchery. That's why you have a different vaccination schedule from different hatcheries and from also different batch of hatchery also. The implication of the above is that there is no constant vaccination schedule for all the chicks from a particular hatchery. As their vaccination dates depends on the distribution of the immunity they acquired from their parent stock. However, Gomboro and Lasota mother acquired immunity usually falls low within the 10 days of life. Whatever happens, your first Gomboro must be given within the first two weeks and ensure that you buy from a right reliable veterinary shop. Some standard vet shops obtain this information from different hatcheries, sum up the vaccination days, find the average and draw up a chart for their customers. With that, your first gumbro may be 7 days this week and 12 days or 10 days the next week. Lastly, the prevalent viral strain of each of these diseases also guide the standard vet shops to determine when to give certain vaccines which is why the hatcheries that provide you a vaccination schedule sometimes add that the schedule is subject to advice from your local vet who is obviously or who obviously has more information about prevalent diseases because of his or her practices within that specific area and location for years. You can also do without vaccination if your body security is top notch, but I don't advise you that. I don't advise you to do that because it is very risky. This, you are dealing with high livestock. It is very risky to risk your beds. The pain of losing your beds is too much compared to the cost of the vaccine itself. Knowledge on vaccine came from experiences of many years of practices from different farms even personal experience also. So it is not something you joke with at all. If you really don't want to pack out from the business. Now, listen carefully. This Gomboro vaccine 
which give protection against the infectious Bursa disease virus is only for veterinary use and must be used in accordance with all protocols outlined. 1. All vaccine orders must be satisfied by a veterinarian and they shall be handled only by qualified personnel. Gumbro vaccines, which are prophylactic regimens containing the intermediate strains of infectious booster disease virus, are presented in a freeze dry form packed in vials and are generally well tolerated by poultry birds. By well tolerated, I mean the vaccine will not damage the booster, will not impair the immune response, and will not cause significant vaccinal side effects on the poultry beds. This vaccine protects against infectious booster disease, a disease that causes morbidity and mortality in poultry beds. The vaccine comes in 100, 200, 500, 1000, 200, 5000 doses upward. When you are placing your order, make sure that you get the required quantity for the number of beds you have. And the vaccine must be stored in a refrigerator or cold chain at 2 degree to 8 degree centigrade. Now, reconstitute by drawing a small quantity of diluent using a sterile syringe and then transferring the diluent into the freeze dry vaccinal vial. Allow the pellet to dissolve completely with diluent. Gently shake the vaccine vial and then transfer it to the diluent bottle. Rinse the vaccine vial twice with the diluent in a similar manner. Make sure that the container that we use to serve this vaccine to bears must have been washed thoroughly and dried and there is no contaminant, there is no form of, form of chemical that may destroy the vaccine. Ensure a follow strict aseptic techniques during reconstitution. Reconstituted vaccines should be stored in eyes and used completely within one hour after reconstitution. The vaccine can be administered through eye drop method and through drinking water method. In this content, I am going to discuss the drinking water method and the video is all on drinking water method for drinking water method before giving the vaccine we told the birds from drinking water for at least two hours anyway it depends on the season and the climatic condition of your area this ensures that the birds are tasty and will eagerly consume the vaccine containing water within short period of time do not use a disinfectant in drinking water for a period of 48 hours, period 2, and 24 hours after vaccination. If a chlorine pump is used, switch, off, switch it off for the same period of time. The drinkers should be thoroughly cleansed before vaccination and there should be no contaminant in the container. Prepare the required volume of water that will be used for the chicken in 2 hours. This volume may however change according to the weather and environmental conditions use skin milk 2.5 gram of skin milk skin powdered milk a liter of water as an aid in preserving the virus activity and neutralizing the chlorine content of the water always mix the vaccine with clean cold non-chlorinated water by opening the vial under the water and let stand for at least or between 10 to 20 minutes. Now, listen carefully. Prepare the required volume of water that will be consumed by the chicken in two hours. Now, these are the quantity of water you use for each of the 
vice or dosages and the same time the number of bears that are required for each of the dose now you have 100 doses beds under the age of 14 to 18 days we take 100 doses one liter of water to dissolve 100 dose and administer to 100 beds between the age of 14 days 200 doses 2 to 3 liters beds under 14 to 18 days 500 doses 4 to 5 liters beds under 14 to 18 days 18, 18 days 1000 doses beds under 14 to 18 days we take 8 to 10 liters 2000 doses beds under 14 to 18 days we take 15 to 20 liters to dissolve it 5000 doses of gumboro vaccine for bears under 14 to 18 days we take 30 to 40 liters of water to dissolve it then bears under 21 to 28 days under 21 to 28 days but remember you should do everything within your power to give this vaccine before 28 days. Should be within the second week and third week. Best. The best time to give them is within second and third week. If possible, start from the tenth day. 100 doses best 21 days we take two liters of water 200 doses best under three weeks we take three to four liters 500 doses five to six liters of water to dissolve it 1000 doses 10 to 12 liters of water to dissolve it 2000 doses 25 to 30 liters of water to dissolve it 5000 doses 50 to 60 liters of water to dissolve it. Always mix the vaccine with clean, cold, non chlorinated water by opening the vial under the water and let stand for 10 to 20 minutes. Precautions. This vaccine is not recommended for those bears which are clinically sick. Or under conditions of severe stress. Vastnet only healthy beds. I repeat, vastnet only healthy beds. Keep vaccine in an ice bath during the entire vaccination period, depending on the method of your vaccination, either intraocular or water vaccine. Reconstitute vaccine. Or reconstituted vaccines should be used immediately, at least within one hour. Do not use chemical disinfectant for sterilization. Do not rehydrate vaccine until ready for use. Use entire content of the vial when opened. Burn all the used vials both on use and all the content or dig a pit and put them inside and see them permanently. Do not vaccinate within 21 days before slaughter. Make sure you wash all the materials, containers you use in vaccination immediately after vaccination wash them with disinfectant